In this lecture of the cardiovascular system, we're going to talk about the cardiac conduction system and an EKG. The heart is composed of cardiac muscle, or myocardium. And because the heart is composed of a muscle, it has the ability to contract when stimulated by an electrical impulse. Cardiac muscle also has the ability to conduct or transmit an electrical impulse. The cardiac conduction system of the heart is a system in which an action potential is created and transmitted, and in turn, that action potential stimulates the contraction of the atria and ventricles. So in the animation, you can see an electrical impulse being created and then being transmitted throughout the heart. Not only is the heart composed of myocardium or cardiac muscle, it's also composed of nodal tissue. Nodal tissue is unique because it has properties of both muscle and nervous tissue. The first type of nodal tissue is called the sinoatrial node. The sinoatrial node is also known as the pacemaker cells. It's a cluster of cells located in the right atrium that has the ability to spontaneously generate an electrical impulse, which in essence sets the heart rate of the heart. The next nodal tissue is the atrioventricular node. The atrioventricular node is also located in the right atrium. After the atrioventricular node comes the atrioventricular bundle, or the bundle of Hiss. The atrioventricular bundle will branch into a right and left bundle branches. The atrioventricular bundle, along with the right and left bundle branches, will travel through the interventricular septum and up the walls of the left and right ventricles. And finally, the right and left bundle branches will create smaller little branches called Purkinje fibers. Purkinje fibers extend up into papillary muscles and aid in the closing of atrioventricular valves. So in the animation here of the cardiac induction system, you can see that electrical impulse starts at the sinoatrial node, and that electrical impulse will travel through the atrial walls, causing the atrial walls to contract. That electrical signal in the atrial walls then is collected at the atrioventricular node, and from the atrioventricular node, that electrical impulse will travel through the atrioventricular bundle before branching off into the right and left bundle branches. The movement of the electrical impulse through the interventricular septum and up the walls of the right and left uh, ventricles causes the ventricles to contract. Because cardiac muscle can conduct and transmit an electrical impulse, we can measure that electrical activity and view that electrical activity through something called an electrocardiogram. An electrocardiogram records the electrical activity of the myocardium during a cardiac cycle. An electrocardiogram, such as the one viewed here, can be broken up into different waves and complexes. The first wave is what we call a P wave. The P wave represents the depolarization of the atria, and during depolarization of the atria, the atria are contracting. The next part of an EKG is called the QRS complex. The QRS complex represents the depolarization of the ventricles, and during the depolarization of the ventricles, the ventricles are contracting. And finally, the last part of an EKG is called the T wave. The T wave represents the repolarization of the ventricles, and during repolarization of the ventricles, the ventricles are relaxing.